Have you ever felt your controller doesn't feel smooth in some games and even though you change the settings and ensure that you're using a specific one but still feels off? More importantly, if you recently got the DualSense Edge, you may feel that the joystick feels choppy and isn't like the old DualSense. It's not only you, but many also reported they feel better and more accurate with DualSense compared to DualSense Edge. And there are a few reasons that causes that and in this video we're gonna dive into them. Let's start with the curves and how they work. Work. A response curve is a curve that determines how should your game respond to a change. So we have the joystick here and let's say we want to push it in a direction from center to the right. When we have a linear curve, the game and the console carefully follows your action, meaning it has a one-to-one -one response and moves at the same speed and amount that you are pushing the analog stick. But the issue starts from the point where these curves aren't real. Yes, you heard me right. Whether in a game or even in system level calibration, there are some cases where this isn't how it works in the game. Let me give you an example. For years we thought the response curve settings in Call of Duty looks like this, as it is in many more games. So if I choose linear, I should get something like this in the game, right? No, you won't. We did an in-depth 9-step test recently and realized the real linear curve in Call of Duty looks like this. The other curves are also not the way we thought, and they look like this. That might be one of the reasons why when you play another game as a Call of Duty player, you feel they are not the same. You choose linear, for example, in Overwatch 2, and it is a real linear curve. And that's far from Call of Duty, and it feels different or reverse. So what could we do about it? And by the way, is there a difference between DualSense and DualSense Edge default curve in linear? There might be. Recently I started testing the default curve from DualSense and DualSense Edge in Overwatch 2 and the reason is the linear curve in Overwatch is a real linear curve. It's not a lie. And I've got these curves for both controllers. I'll give you 3 seconds to guess which belongs to which. Did you guess it right? Let me know in the comments. Here's a list of people who guess it right in the community post before I make the video. The blue one is DualSense Edge and the red one is DualSense. At first I thought I might have done wrong calculations but I repeated the exact sections and with these settings in the game to give me a linear curve I've got that response. It might not be very accurate as I only tested them in 9 steps but I can tell there's a slight difference in terms of how DualSense responds in PS5 compared to DualSense Edge. It might be only in Overwatch 2, but you know many of us feel it's faster on higher pushes and harder to control, at least that's how I felt, and that could be because of a small curve at the start. It might be only my controller, but let me know if you feel DualSense Edge is different too. I will surely expand this test in Call of Duty's next video when I wanna try slop scale settings. So how do we match DualSense Edge response curve to feel like DualSense? I'll give you my settings, it may work or may not work for you. I'm just making this based on tests and science, not the human experiments. So try them and let me know if it works. So to match them, we need a curve that starts a bit faster before 50% of the push and becomes a bit slower at higher pushes. I tested many curves in the settings and adjusted them. They are very limited as you know. So the only curve I found matching this very well is a steady minus 5. Keep in mind that this curve would make the second part a bit faster and you may need to lower your sensitivity settings a bit in the game you are playing. For the left stick you don't need it actually for a shooter game unless you play a racing game or something. But for the right stick just try steady minus 5 and give it a chance to see if it helps. It doesn't matter if your in-game settings aren't linear. This curve is supposed to make DualSense joystick feel like DualSense in any sensitivity curve you use. But why do many people who have been playing competitive games since PS3 prefer linear curves? For many years we've gotten used to a 1 to 1 ratio response and our mind can't accept a huge change suddenly. That's one of the reasons people can't get used to a different curve in edge easily. You may say bro, I've been playing Call of Duty for many years and I prefer dynamic. I use a lower slop scale and it feels good. You're right, because linear isn't linear by default in Call of Duty. And the dynamic has a faster response at the start. That's closer to what we used to have. If there was a real linear and dynamic curve like what we've seen on the internet, you wouldn't be able to control it easily. A reversed S curve with such a high response at the start? That's crazy and completely in reverse of what we are used to. That's why people 
like this curve because it's kind of more linear to start with. Now there are other games that doesn't feel quite right on PS4 and even now on PS5, especially story games that have very limited controller settings usually. I remember Tomb Raider had a very unpopular response curve with a huge dead zone and ease in. It was as hard as I didn't go for platinum because I couldn't control my aim. But it played on PC and I was much happier. Another recent title was Armored Core 6 which has a 50% stick dead zone, meaning for 50% of the push nothing happens. Then it starts to respond and that's not good. I mean for such a game it wasn't a huge problem but I'm trying to tell you what's wrong nowadays. The issue is a developer and Sony didn't make an integration between the games and the console settings. For example we have a dead zone option and response care for dual sensage but this is not what you get in the game. As explained in the past videos this curve and settings will be combined with the game setting so this is not the real output. That's why I told you it's not real. If your game has a dead zone this zero is no longer zero. Let's say FC24 which has a 40% dead zone this part is not zero anymore it's 40 and the FC24 has a response curve like this digital and considering that this response curve here is no longer real. Any input after the dead zone is registered as one in FC24 and before that that is zero. So it doesn't matter at all what response curve you have here. The output is always the same in FC24. Or for example, in Call of Duty, if I use Quake Curve here and the game is dynamic, the final curve will be like this. A combination of both. It's a bit crazy, right? Why should we go through too many steps and we don't know what we get at the end of the day? Why can't they just implant a system where every game can follow that? Like HDR calibration that games can take info from and use it? Add a system level controller calibration so developers can use it and maybe we can see an option in games for the controller as system settings. I think that could be the greatest update of all time. Now there is one note. In terms of dead zone settings where well, some games give you full control. For example in COD you can change it from real zero or in Overwatch 2 recent updates you can use dead zone settings. There is an option called overwrite which overrides the system dead zone settings. We have add that can add to the current dead zone and more. This makes me wonder. If this option is possible to be overwritten by Overwatch 2, it should be possible to be added for other games and response curves too. The best way is usually to make it zero and see if your character or camera moves on its own. Then slowly add values until they no longer move without your command. So the curves represent how your stick is gonna reflect the game character or camera. However, they may not be exactly as they are presented. But they can look different and still carry the names and lie to us. Linear is not always linear and dual sensage might be a bit different in responding to a linear curve. You can use this curve and see if it helps to make it smoother and maybe match the dual sense but the fact is we are used to linear curves for many years and the change won't be easy and fast if a game doesn't feel right. In those cases try to make the dead zone as low as possible if there is an option for that and if they support response curve settings play with them and see how they work. For example in the last of us part 2 remastered or part 1 remake aiming ramp power scale and acceleration scale controls the start and the end part of the curve. You can't see it, that's not great. But when you know what they do, it's easier to match it with your liking. But aside from all of that, one thing I was happy to use recently were these thumb caps that I've got for my DualSense edge. As the material feels different, I feel it's easier to control my aim this way. To find out my review for them and if they could be helpful for you, check the video from the end screen or the links in the pinned comment.